Yes, thank you very much, Carla. Just a, a very uh, addendum to what has been just said. If you have the feeling that uh, you don't have some kind of data before uh, deciding not to do the study, maybe ask whether this data might be available from uh, repositories, from the web. Uh, so ask advice to, sorry? Huh? WHO. WHO, because we understood for models there are many sources of data which might be downloaded in some cases for free. We will see also for the health data, there might be uh, data worldwide or in Europe or in other continents available. So that was just a, a, a suggestion. So yes, I will, uh, I will talk about population data, mortality and morbidity rates, but uh, compared with uh, the previous presentation, I would like to keep it uh, as, uh, let's say, interactive as possible. I will not speak one and a half hour about this. I will just present a few examples uh, of uh, Italian data or European data, because this is those that I know better. But uh, I would also like to ask you whether in your country, in your uh, place, if you already are aware of data about population, mortality, morbidity that you might, might use. So the idea is that uh, yesterday we spoke, uh, and to this morning actually we spoke about uh, air pollute exposure, let's say here, but uh, in order to implement uh, an environmental, uh, integrated environmental health impact assessment, of course, we also need uh, data about population and data about uh, mortality and, uh, and morbidity. So I will talk about uh, how to uh, estimate uh, uh, the population exposed to our air pollutants or environmental stressors in general and where to uh, obtain data about the, the, the events, those of mortality, morbidity, et cetera. This, is, this will be the topic of this, of this presentation. So, okay. First of all, why we need population? This is quite easy to understand, but uh, I mean, I think it, it's important to, 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 to remind that we need population because of course, when we have a map, a very nice map, of exposure, we need to, to, to know where people live. We need to attribute this exposure to the population in order to then uh, compute the attributable cases. So for example, if we have a very nice uh, cohort study like in this uh, very uh, simple example, then uh, our cohort will provide us with all the information we need in terms of uh, number of subjects in each uh, exposure group, number of events, and so we can compute easily the relative risks, which are the concentrations response functions we will speak about uh, in the next few days, the attributable fraction, and then uh, the uh, attributable cases. But in general, of course, when we do environmental health impact assessment studies, we saw that we have uh, a sort of broader assessment of uh, exposure on a geographical basis, either based on uh, dispersion models or land use regression, whatever, on some wide continuous surface, but then we have to match this exposure, this actually before getting to the exposure, we, we saw the, the, the keys, uh, I mean sequence, before, we have to match this concentration map to administrative boundaries, which are those that generally we, we are uh, able to, to collect from official archives in order to move from the concentration to the actual population exposure. And so this is a very simple example. This is a po pollution point source uh, and uh, waste incinerator in, in Turin. And uh, so it's, it's the, red, uh, the red dot here. There has been a, a, an exp a concentration uh, modeling uh, around that. And then you can see all the census blocks, in this case, very fine uh, uh, spatial scale units, which is where population live. And so the, the next step will be how to basically overlay the, 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 the population data with the, the exposure data. Okay, so this is a, a, another example from the same area. So why we need to estimate population? Again, this is quite intuitive. Uh, we have the population and events which are registered by specific administrative area, whereas the pollutant is uh, widespread and comes from a different model, and so it's, it's on a different uh, spatial uh, scale. 
Okay, how to estimate exposed population? So basically, I was saying we need to to bring to the same uh, support uh, the, the, the exposure map and the population data. And so we can do it, of course, in two different uh, approaches. Either we give uh, more emphasis, more importance to the administrative scale, to the special units coming from administrative data, either they be municipalities or provinces or counties or uh, smaller areas or individual addresses if you have a, a, a smaller population. So in this case, uh, this, is, this can be because maybe we have some covariates in the proposed model which are only collected at the municipality scale and so we really need to stuck with the, that special scale. So in this case, what we will do, and we will see it in the next few slides, will be to bring the, the exposure model to, to, the, to the administrative uh, scale special units. And the opposite would be doing the, the other way around. I mean, we can... Uh, we, maybe we really want to give more emphasis to the exposure map. We want to make the smallest uh, possible error in terms of uh, uh, attributing exposure to individuals, and so we don't want to, to, to change the, the, the shape of our fixed grids, for example, four by four kilometer cell. We want to keep it fixed, and we want to, 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 to let's say, to bring administrative boundaries into that uh, fixed grid. So, in the first example, from grid to administrative scale, this is, this is quite a, a simple example, where basically we have this municipality here, you have, you, you have the, the black contour, okay, and we have uh, on the background this, you see, these squares, this is four by four kilometer squares, some areas have higher pollution levels, some other areas, the, let's say the, the, the brown here, uh, have lower levels, and so the question is how much population of this municipality is exposed to either red level pollutants and how much is exposed to brown uh, levels. So this is the, the quite a general question, but of course we also know that the population is not necessarily homogeneously distributed within the, 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 the municipality. So th the second question, in order to try to, to reduce the possible exposure uh, 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 misclassification is whether we can uh, uh, account for built-up areas, which are these uh, brown contours here. So basically from other sources of data, you know, these small polygons here, okay. There are uh, data about, for example, the built-up areas in terms of high development, uh, low development, uh, and anthropogenic settlings as compared to natural uh, areas. So how to incorporate this into the exposure uh, attribution. So here the, the aim is to develop a methodology to obtain a map of administrative area scale. So we will keep those units as our reference units. And to each one of those we want to give a, an air pollution estimate. And we will do it in two ways. The most simple approach is just to intersect the, the census blocks with the grid cells and to attribute the exposure. The second approach would be to overweight the fraction of the territory where there is built up area, because this is where most of the population uh, might reside. Okay, so as I said, built up areas can be uh, obtained uh, from several uh, different sources, for example, from the Cor Corin uh, land cover. And so basically what we can do it's in the, in the, let's say, the most uh, simple approach top here, we can just intersect our fixed grid cells from exposure to our uh, uh, census, to our, I mean, uh, uh, polygons of the admin, administrative uh, uh, scale units, and basically we weight each uh, uh, square in terms of the size of the intersection area. So if the square is entirely inside the, 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 the census block, like for example this one, it will be, it will have a highest uh, weight, whereas in this case we will weight this square only for this amount of intersection. And this is a, a quite a simple approach. But the second approach, which is more uh, relevant to our purpose, will be the one where we relax the uh, assumption, the simplistic assumption that the population is homogeneously distributed, we assume that population is mostly concentrated in this, you know, 
uh, small uh, polygons which are the built up areas and so basically what we do in the second approach, the, the B approach is to basically overweight those part of the, of the intersection where most of the population live. So, and this is quite a very simple uh, uh, GIS uh, procedures where you can basically go from one fixed grid and uh, uh, bring the exposure map into the administrative scale uh, special units, also possibly uh, weighting uh, uh, different parts according to built up areas. This has been done in the MEDIS uh, project where basically on, the, uh, on this map you can see the mean annual concentration of PN 2.5 in 2005. This is from the mini project from the ENEA at four kilometer grid resolution. And then after this, uh, this effort, uh, this is uh, uh, a population weighted uh, exposure to PM2, PM2.5. And then uh, once we have this, this is just based on the intersections and the use of the Corindland cover, we can use then uh, a, a, an external database about uh, nearly 1,500 municipalities in the Italian survey in order to, you know, to, to uh, attribute the population of interest to, to the map on the left side. So this was a, a simple approach where we gave a priority to the administrative scale units and we basically moved the fixed grid of exposure into the, the administrative scale. This is the other approach, the opposite, where basically we do the opposite. So we really want to keep the fixed grid as our reference uh, grid and we want to, to do the, 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 the reverse. And so basically, I will not go too much into in detail, but uh, just to stress the issue that uh, depending on which is the study objective, in this case, that this is what was done in the VIAS project, we really wanted to keep fixed the exposure map because we wanted to minimize the exposure misclassification. And we basically moved all the population attributes and the mortality and morbidity data into the fixed grid by doing this uh, other approach. Where basically, again, we intersected the, the, you know, the blocks with the, the, the squares, but then uh, what we did basically was to get a, a final estimate of population for the grid, not, not anymore for the, for, the, for, the, for the polygon, for the grid, and we weighted the, this uh, estimate of the population according to the built up areas. So these are two ways of doing basically the, the same thing. So now I will try to just provide a few information about where we can get uh, data about population, about mortality, about uh, morbidity, and this is also where I will also ask you to start thinking about where you can get similar kind of data in your country, in your region, for example. So this is an example where most of the population data in Italy are provided by, by the ISTAT, which is the National Institute of Statistics in Italy. So there is this open source uh, website where it is possible for each municipality, comune is the municipality, for each single age, year, also distinguishing between uh, marital status categories and uh, gender, it is possible to get uh, uh, for all years the, the resident population. So this is uh, an example of uh, how to, to download this data. So in the main page we have uh, the most recent years, but it is also possible to get data about past years from a pre sensual series of the resident population. And there are also life tables that can be used for our purposes. So my suggestion to you would be to investigate, to check with maybe your colleagues in the demographic departments or in other institutions whether there is some kind of uh, a repository of, like this. I mean, it is possible that many of these data will be kind of publicly available, at least to uh, uh, um, maybe broad... Uh, uh, details not very refined, but it is possible that this data exists also in other in other places. Okay, and this is uh, other other examples where we can also go to census blocks, which is smaller than the, the municipality. Okay, this is an example about the Eurostat, which is a, a European archive. It's not just Italy, so this is Europe. 
I understand there are not so many people from Europe here apart few. So maybe this is not relevant for many of you, but again, it is possible that in Africa or in Asia or in other places there could, sorry, could be some, something similar. So the Eurostat is a, a, a European uh, archive where it is possible, again, to get information about the 2011 census. And from here, you can see there are many different layers of information about population by current activity status, by country of citizenship, and, and so, so on, by age, gender, etc. It is possible with a very user-friendly interface to select the, 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 the country and then to, to download the data in whatever nice format and layout you, 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 you need. Okay, and these are just the example tables of, uh, of this kind of data. You can see here, for example, for the exact republic, we have a, a distinction by gender and by age groups for the year 2011. Okay, just downloaded freely from the Eurostat website. Okay, and there are also other information, pieces of information like unemployment rate, etc. Okay, so this is when we have uh, broad areas like country level uh, uh, investigation and we really want to attribute uh, uh, and to evaluate the impact of uh, our uh, exposure on a broad level. But it is also possible that we have a, a smaller scale study, like for example, residential population cohorts for, for which it is really necessary to derive the uh, residential addresses from geocoding procedures. This is when, for example, we want to attribute a health impact assessment of a specific uh, industrial plant which doesn't affect a huge area, only a, a, a smaller area, and we want to really be more careful about the exposure assessment of specific individuals living in that area. So there are a, a number of uh, possibilities here, either with the uh, open source or with the private uh, software to, to geocode the, the addresses and to, to get so X and Ys of uh, uh, individual addresses. This is an example in the Puglia region where uh, this was done for a number of uh, municipalities. And so you can see all the dots here uh, represent individual uh, residences. Okay. Again, there are possibilities like this also available in the Eurostat uh, uh, website for Europe. And again, uh, the, the suggestion, so you can see very nice maps which is possible to produce and to download uh, uh, for free. And again, you, depending on which is your aim, if, if, if you are more into this kind of small scale but very refined uh, impact assessment study, then uh, you might check with your colleagues in other departments whether this kind of data might be available as well. Okay, yes. <clears throat> so this is a, a slide, uh, I, I left it because uh, it, uh, this is just one slide about the difference between short-term and long-term effect. So the question is whether we need different population uh, estimates if we are more interested into the short-term effect of uh, air pollution. So this, is a, this goes back to yesterday's question whether you are more into like the conventional long-term uh, uh, impact uh, assessment studies where you really need to have a a good characterization of, uh, of space, both in terms of exposure and in terms of, uh, you know, population and health data, versus on the other side, uh, you are more into interested in investigating in, in, in uh, whether there is a, a short-term impact coming from daily exposure uh, uh, to in, in, into your population. The two questions are quite difficult, of course. It very depends on your study aim. I don't know whether there would be a possibility at some point during this week, Carla, to kind of bring up this issue again and trying to understand from, uh, from different people here whether it, what is your main interest uh, uh, in terms of health impact assessment. But, I mean, if the, the, the focus is more, in more on the short-term effect, then uh, the population, uh, I mean, the spatial scale is not so relevant anymore because... Uh, 
When we study short-term effect, we are much more focused on the day-to-day -day variability of air pollution, and we assume that this day-to-day -day variability is homogeneous across the, with the, the, the specific city, because it is more driven by, let's say, meteor meteorological patterns and short-term scale patterns, which are kind of uh, assumed to be a constant over space within, of course, small enough areas. So in this case, we don't have to struggle in trying to find uh, you know, population data at a very refined spatial scale, it would be more relevant instead to have some sort of uh, assessment of the temporal variability of the, of the population in, in hands. Okay, so we spoke about uh, basically about the, the, the denominator, so the, the number of the population which live in, in a specific area. Now we shift a little bit into the numerators, which is, which is basically the number of events which occur in terms of either co-specific mortality or co-specific uh, morbidity, which occur uh, in, a, in a specific uh, uh, area by uh, always age straight, of course. And this is relevant, of course, because in order to evaluate the impact of a specific uh, exposure in a population, we need to know how many total cases we have, how many people live there, and only knowing these pieces of information, then we can uh, estimate how many of those events can be attributed to that exposure. That's the, that's the idea, starting from the total number of cases and then by attributing conventional uh, methodologies which will be explained fully this week, let's say extrapolate the few or not so few cases which are directly attributable to the air pollutant uh, exposure uh, in, in under investigation. <laughs> okay, and so this is basically what I said. So a few slides also, and this is questions also for you. Okay, let's assume we have uh, understood where to collect uh, population data about uh, by age, by gender, for uh, whatever special uh, scale unit you, you, you might have in your study. The next question, if we want to study the impact on mortality, would be to, to try to understand how to get mortality data. And of course, this mortality data should be on the same scale as the population data because they should be the, the numerators of those rates and so they have to be on the same scale. Again, uh, in, in, this is for Italy, we have this uh, 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 National Institute of Statistics which provide uh, 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 some information about mortality by cause, district, gender, by age, uh, etc. So this is... Uh, these were the causes of death which were selected in the previous uh, uh, impact assessment evaluation that uh, uh, was done in Italy. And basically there was a focus on chronic effects and so these causes you can see here, all causes, lung cancer, myocardial infarction and cerebrovascular diseases. And for the acute effects, these were the causes on which the, 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 the researchers uh, focused on. And these are just uh, uh, simple maps by province. In Italy, we have uh, 20 regions and uh, I think 110 provinces with the crude rates that can be derived from these uh, uh, publicly available uh, sources of data. So this is for all natural causes, males and females, and there are other maps for, for, for the other causes as well. So, of course, the idea is to, we really need to, to get this kind of uh, information. So these are crude rates, which means these are maps which report the, the ratios between the population data as the denominator and the mortality counts by cause as the numerator for each, for each uh, uh, province in this case. Okay, and we have all the different causes. So this is in also interesting because uh, this data, for example, for Italy, also provides uh, uh, information about, about age structure, etc., which allows us to standardize these rates and so to, to, to check differences across space between crude and, uh, and uh, adjusted uh, rates by province. And generally, this kind of information is, at least on a broader spatial scale like this, for example, is available in many, in many other countries. So again, check whether you have this kind of information and if you don't, 
maybe just contact us and we can try to understand whether from uh, other sources which might be non-European maybe, maybe like for example WHO sources or other kind of global sources, whether there are at least with some kind or, uh, of, of information uh, uh, for, for uh, countries outside Europe. Okay, and there are, so same issue goes with morbidity rates. We might want to investigate the impact not just on mortality, but maybe we want to investigate the impact of air pollution on morbidity, or we want to compute the, the you know, disability adjusted life years, etc. We You will hear about these concepts and this uh, uh, terminology during these days. So this is just to say we are not only focusing on mortality because air pollution and climate change might impact not just mortality, but also a wider range of, uh, of outcomes. So the question here is whether there are available data on uh, hospitalizations uh, that we might uh, download uh, again for investigating either acute or long-term effects of air pollution. Okay, and this is uh, again uh, uh, those uh, outcomes which were evaluated uh, in, in Italy for the morbidity outcomes. Okay, and it is possible again to derive uh, different maps of, uh, of, of rates. Okay, uh, yes. So again, how to get morbidity? In Italy, we have several multicenter studies. Some of those are, were focused on uh, specific cities, like for example, the APR or MISA project or specific uh, uh, areas like the Sidria study. At the national level, uh, we have also the availability from the Ministry of Health. It's not so easy to get this data, but there are data about hospital discharge files at the national level. For, so all the uh, hospitals, uh, both public and private, are uh, by, by law they have to provide uh, the, the, the Ministry of Health with all the discharge records, and in some cases it is possible to, to get this, this data at the national level and to use them for impact assessment evaluations. Whereas it is more easy at the regional level because each region is in charge of collecting and monitoring and the surveillance of the population and so to get the, 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 the hospital discharge files at the regional level. So what about health data in other countries? Here I'm just reporting a few slides. I'm not very much, I mean, uh, expert about these data sources because I've been using mostly Italian data. But I know that, for example, uh, uh, WHO provides information uh, about uh, health status of uh, worldwide population. There might be disease registries specific. There might be local health information systems in your region, in your county whatever there might be information systems which are now uh, electronic systems, or maybe also there could, there could be a doc service that you might want to, to use uh, for a more local uh, or specific uh, investigation. And yes, this is just a, a few examples from the World Health Organization uh, archive. So again, there is the website, you can just try to see what is available uh, for, for your country, or you might want to, to use specific uh, service. Okay, so yeah, basically I, I finished, so I think I was ahead of time. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I would, uh, I would more uh, open the, this kind of discussion. If you have questions, of course, you can ask me, but I would more open the discussion to, to the audience, I think, Carla, for opening this kind of uh, reasoning. For, yeah, for example, uh, it could be interesting to share now maybe um, some problems that you have uh, and can be common to, to others guy because what um, Massimo presented is mainly focused on what we have in Europe. So it's probably not the same situation for the, for the majority of the, Isabella wanna, wanna say something? Okay, just for example, could you raise your hand if you, you or your department has availability of health data, at least mortality data? 
in a, in a how to say, computer-based file. I mean, not how many mortality. So I'm not going to ask for morbidity. No, no, I mean, just if you work in a department that cope both with, uh, with the environment and the health, how, may, how many? In AAC? Okay, so few. All the other comes both from university or um, a place where just the exposure assessment uh, is, is conducted. I, I'm... I'm uh, Correct in say that. Yes. Who wanna speak? Yeah. No. No. What? What we are asking? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Does it work? Okay, thank you. Thank you first for your presentation. It was very interesting. Uh, so we, we see that uh, this uh, impact uh, assessment of uh, air quality, for example, is a big issue and it depends on many parameters. And uh, I think that there are a lot of approximations. So yes. my question is how to validate the, the, the results and uh, how, how, uh, how much confidence can we give to the, when, when we, for example, when we make the assessment and we, we say that we have uh, this, this part of mortality is due to air quality or is due to another yeah. effect. So how to validate the, the results and uh, 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 how much confidence can we, can we give to, okay. to, to our estimates? Okay, I mean, you are right. There are several assumptions which are made both in the exposure model and in, in the way it is attributed to population and the way population is distributed over the territory and the mortality and morbidity counts, etc. There is, a, I think, Carla, a specific session led by Andrea, maybe about uncertainty, Andrea. So there are uh, ways to quantify the uncertainties behind this chain of assumption and to report them. I mean, the best thing we can do is to be sincere and clear about the uncertainties we have, because there are several. So not just provide, uh, you know, 20% is due to, more, to air pollution and that's it, but to provide, uh, you know, some uh, range of confidence within which we, we lie and uh, which account, take into account, if I'm not wrong, all single aspects of uncertainties, which is not just a statistical error in the statistical model, that's a smaller part, but it's more, in, you know, uncertainties in the exposure models and in all the steps uh, along the way. So, yes, it, it's a good point to, to be clear about uh, the, the doubts and the uncertainties we have, because, uh, as you say, when we do this kind of efforts, it's a, generally it's big, you know, wide scale effort and so the more wide you go the less precise you can be you know in 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 the in, in all the steps you are doing but the, this is the price the, the price to pay i mean so yeah there will be a session on that thank you uh, my question is for example uh, if the uh, we use only the survey approach to have an idea about morbidity rates for, for example, for a city which is divided on five or six municipalities. Is sufficient or no? I mean, you have a survey and you divide only a survey, city yes. in, into five or six macro areas. This is yes. this yes. question. Yes. I mean, it, this is a very approximation, of course, but it is, I would say, as long as you declare your uncertainties, it is better than nothing. But of course, having a so crude approximation will not provide so much information in terms of the impact, I would say. If you have a big city and you divide it into five or six based on a few points you have from a survey, I mean, you, you, I guess that your uncertainty estimate will be very wide. But I mean, it's, it's, it's better than nothing for sure. Uh, I think, if I can comment, that is probably a starting point 
to describe the situation in that area. I mean, it's not, you cannot generalize to all the population, but it's still valid for, for in, inside your survey. And the results can be used maybe to decide if it's the case or not to, deep, to, to start a more deeper uh, approach, let's say an epidemiological evaluation or something like that, but it's still valid as a description of what is going on in that city, because also conduct a survey is a very tiring and a, a very good initiative, I mean, in public health. So it's, it's something that, but you have to take into account that you cannot say uh, something or uh, not to extrapolate the, the, your results to the whole continent or the whole area. No? Yeah. Uh, any other? Please. Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, actually, I have a question about the population data. Does this record uh, include any um, population who doesn't re reside in the city? For example, in my city, uh, there are around 3 million people commute to work, but we don't have any records about them that they reside in the city, but they are uh, the, the population that very affected by the air pollution, but they are not in the analysis. So what do you, do you usually do for this kind of situation? I mean, this is a good, good question. Do you remember, Carla, if in these national archives, there is the difference between resident and present population? That's the question. Generally, we rely on the resident population because this is, comes from census data, which report the actual residents of the people. So there might be, this is one of the sources of uh, uncertainty we were speaking about. We use it as a proxy of the population who live there, but then we know that there is a lot of uh, commuting and a lot of people which spend most of their daily life somewhere else compared to where they reside. So in principle, we would like to have both resident and the present population. I, I would say in practical terms, generally, it's more easy to get the resident population and not the present one. Also because uh, all the health indicators are available for the residents. So unless you don't have you know, a very huge uh, availability of health indicators, because what about for the people present every day and then come back uh, in, an, in another place tonight? What about their hospitalization rates, their morbidity rates? So when you use the residents, you are assuming that people stay at home 24 hours, which is not true, we, we all know, but you, you can have um, any and more advantages in using that, but still you have to consider that. Now I know that with this uh, uh, availability of a smartphone, you could follow people because all the, all the smartphones have a, a GPS uh, system, so if available, they could be you know, a new frontier for this kind of research because you, you have your personal dosimeter, you, you move during the day and they know, Google knows exactly where you are. So, but still starting now. So let's be a little more traditional in, in that. Um, any other comment? Because it would be nice to listen from your own experience uh, in using this data. Someone would, would add something? Please, Miriam. I I'm just I... sorry, I'm just interrupting you two seconds. Just wanted to know if someone in the room was opposed to be filmed or not, because I mean, we'd be happy to see all the room when asking questions and talking here for the people from the webinar and yourself. Is someone opposed to have it, because maybe it will be on YouTube and you would see, you would be on YouTube, but like that. Is someone is opposed to that? No? Okay, thank you. Um, since you asked about our uh, feedback, uh, I just want to say that uh, what you presented is excellent and for us it's the best setting that we, that we may get, but in countries like, uh, I'll be presenting uh, the case of Beirut on Thursday, we don't have such privilege and such database to, to work on it. So uh, this is just I, what I wanted to, uh, to, to say. And uh, let's say for census, it's not easy always to, to get this information. I don't know in, if in other countries they, they have this, but at least I, don't, I, can't rem I can't recall the date, but it's too old, let's say, for Lebanon. And for uh, data on mortality, uh, we tried hard in BAF study to get uh, uh, data on mortality, and it was really difficult. And even in the registries, we, we don't have uh, adequate information. 
because when when we fill the certificate of uh, of death, we end up uh, with a heart attack or uh, something like that. So we don't we don't have the steps that usually we use in uh, in Europe. So um, for us, it's really very interesting and very advanced. But we need to uh, we need to go into small steps to reach such a stage. I, I can add that you don't have yet. Yes, yes. Because it's still valuable to think about starting this process. It will take 10 years to implement and validate and everything, but after 10 years, which is very, very quick time, you can have... I'm, the, the, I'm, not, I'm not being pessimistic. We, yeah. we already started in 2010, but uh, it's, it's not really easy to, to reach this uh, level. Thank you. Uh, yes, I, I didn't understand the last part of your presentation concerning the mortality data, uh, so the utility of this, uh, of this information. The, the utility? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it will be discussed a lot in the next few days, the methodology to, to, implement, to, to do the health impact assessment, but basically what you need from, from this uh, data, you, you need to get uh, rates of mortality overall in order to, to uh, kind of extrapolate the, the, the amount which is attributable to air pollution. The background rates. The background rates, exactly. No, nothing from the... <laughs> okay, okay, so I think we can thank Massimo. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, just practical. Someone asked me if the presentation...